Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you for joining me. Today we are live from the Universal Broadcasting Network studios in Hollywood, California. And I have to give a big shout out to my wonderful producer, Jarvis Essex. Hello, Jarvis. He's he's a little busy actually running the show. <laughs> but he said hello in case you couldn't hear him and through his mic. And I'm really excited about today's show. We are getting really close to Christmas. If you're listening to this in an archive, it is December 3rd, 2017. And I do want to tell you all about a class that I'm teaching in just a couple of minutes. Um, excuse me, in a couple of weeks. But I, 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 that was because, you know, I got interrupted right there by Shamuel, Archangel Shamuel, who always helps me remember things that I've lost or forgotten or misplaced. And he said, yo, say hi to the Lightworkers Lab first. Hello, Lightworkers Lab. Woohoo! So uh, the Lightworkers Lab is an online spiritual community founded by Crystal and Compton. If it's your first time listening, then this is probably the first time you've heard me say it. If it's not your first time listening, it's probably not because I talk about it all the time. I'm a teacher and um, a guide in the Lightworkers Lab. You can join our community by searching for the Lightworkers Lab on Facebook. It is a group. It is a private group, a sacred, beautiful space with ridiculous free resources. So join us and bring your heart and we're all just going to love on each other and raise the vibration of the planet together. And the class of mine that I want to tell y'all about is called Meet and Work with Your Elemental Guides. <gasps> yeah, we're talking about fairies. We're talking about gnomes, unicorns, dragons. I'm serious. We're talking about leprechauns, too. Now, I know that this might sound a little out there and esoteric for many people, but guess what? It's not. It's just that we have been so socially conditioned to think that it is weird and esoteric. It's actually extremely natural for us to connect with these nature spirits and these uh, different etheric realms. You see, culture and religion have pretty much kept in our awareness angels and other kinds of spirit guides and ascended masters and, you know, like Jesus and the Buddha and all of that kind of stuff. But we have been conditioned to really forget about the nature spirit realm and the etheric realm. And they are right here with us, working with us to make this planet really beautiful. And they want to work with us really intentionally. So let's undo some of that social conditioning that the word fairy tale is actually a derogatory term. And let's join together and connect with these beings who are just its so powerful. They are all about manifestation, y'all. And they're all about Gaia love. And Gaia is all about abundance. And who doesn't want some more abundance, especially in December? All right, so do join me. And the class is going to be taught live in a private Facebook group. And you can continue to watch the archives for a full year. You'll have access to the content for a full year. So if you can't join us live, no worries. Because the way that you're actually going to be accessing the supplemental material like the exercises and the meditations that will connect you directly with a relationship with your elemental guides, and you do have them, we all do, is by going to the student portal. That So you have the Facebook group where it's going to be addressed live, and then we also have some community going on there already, even though the class is going to be on December 16th and 17th, a two-day class. Sign up. If you are a Lightworkers Lab member, this is how you're going to you're going to sign up. You're going to go to the lightworkerslab.com slash elementals. Again, for Lightworkers Lab members, the lightworkerslab.com slash elementals. If you are not a Lightworkers Lab member and you are joining me some other way through my website or through this broadcast, Trisha Carr Charm dot com slash elementals trisha car charm dot com slash elementals you can read all about it you can sign up and you can join that facebook group right away where everybody's already sharing their experiences with their elementals with their fairies and their and their i don't even know who this is i think it's a, a mermaid all of that kind of stuff is already happening so i hope you'll join us and having said that i'm very excited to talk about the topic today you guys hear me talk about this kind of stuff all the time about being an empowered empath and my guest expert today is an international singer and songwriter and a certified spiritual coach. She has just launched a program called How to Racket as an Empath, and that is the title of the show. And I'm going to welcome this amazing, bright light, powerful, badass chick, Darianne. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for being How here. Are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. I'm really excited to connect with you. You have infectious energy and I feel really amped up today just by being holding space with you. So thank you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just did a um one of my friend hosts a 
like an internet TV show. And she was, she totally like dressed all rocked out. I was like, we look like we need to do like a rock show after <laughs> this because she was like preparing her energy for me. So I love that. I did too. I'm wearing my leather jacket. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Hey, look at my t-shirt too, everyone. If you're watching on video, if you're, if you're not watching on video, but check it out. Trust me. <gasps> oh, I love it. <laughs> my friend actually made that t-shirt. You can get them on Amazon. If you look for a t-shirt called trust me, I'm an empath. She made a few other ones like trust me, I'm a psychic and trust me, I'm a shaman. So, uh, That's so cute. I wore that for us today too. And I love green. I love pops, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing so in my course, everybody gets the hashtag rock and empath t-shirt. Nice. Great. And then I'm going to start selling them afterwards. So. Oh, perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tell everyone who is listening and all time and space, about your journey and your work, please. Yes. So I actually never, ever, ever set out to help empaths. I didn't even know what an empath was, of course. I suffered with depression when I was 13. I was diagnosed with clinical depression. And for about 15 years, I really struggled with trying to find lasting happiness. Um, of course, as a teenager and young adult, I went through escapism. Uh, basically sex, drugs, and rock and roll <laughs> at that age. And, um, you know, it was just, I was surrounded by negativity. I was raised in chaos. There were parties at my house all the time. So if you could, I mean, cops were showing up at my house all the time. Drugs were being used at my house all the time. My you goodness. can imagine growing up in an environment like that, being sensitive and knowing the, um, it was a real struggle for me. And so I was deeply, deeply I was very suicidal. Mm. I became a teen mom. I was just really misguided. Dropped out of high school when I was uh, 14 and really, really misguided. But I was very strong very driven. And, um, you know, I had this moment of clarity when I was around 24, where I was crawled up on the bathroom floor, you know, begging for God to take me once again. Mm in the home that I grew up in. I was, had been homeless for about six months prior to that. And I was back at home, you know, tail between my legs, had to come back home with my five-year-old daughter, uh, ran out of money and all of that. And I sort of looked back on my life and I realized I had been on essentially this bathroom floor for 11 years, begging for God to take me. I'd attempted suicide. I'd been in and out of mental institutions as a teenager and all sorts of inpatient and outpatient program. I mean, it was really, it was like an HBO series. My life was, and, um, you know, I can laugh about it now, but it wasn't so funny going through it. And I realized that I've been going through this for 11 years, 11 years at that point. And I was like, I have been wasting my life for 11 years, begging for God to take me from it. Hmm. Wow. And in that moment, I realized two things. I realized one, that God wasn't going to take me. Yeah. And two, that nobody was coming to save me. Mm -hmm. As much as my family loved me, they couldn't make me happy within me. Mm. And so I remember sort of picking myself up off of that bathroom floor and splashing some cold water in my face and walking down the steps in the home that I grew up in, you know, having felt all the shame. And by the time I got at the bottom of the steps, I sort of mustered up this incredible strength and courage. And I said, I'm going to save myself. Oh. I'm going to do it. And it was so, I mean, it was really a defining pivotal moment for me in my life. And that then started my quest for ultimate peace. Mm, so of course I started with that. I mean, the power of decision is so intense. I mean, it's really, it's, it dictates our entire lives. And so when you have that moment of clarity where you make that decision, I was like, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to find lasting happiness. And it wasn't, so I knew that drugs could make me happy moment. I knew that I could get high off love or sex or whatever, but none of that lasted and I needed it to last, you know, cause it was like, I dying isn't an option anymore because I knew God wasn't going to take me. And that was my blessing was that dying was no longer an option. So I was going to have to make not just the best of this. I, this was going to, I was going to need to thrive mm. every day of my life. And so with that decision, I started to manifest, of course, books like The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, yep. A Course in Miracles, um, The Tao Te Ching. You know, I started to manifest all of these books into my life. And when I read The Power of Now, that is when I had my spiritual awakening. Mm. I sat and read the first few chapters of that book. And I remember at my friend's house and I drove home and I could see, 
I mean, I almost crashed. I was like driving so slow in awe of everything I was looking at because I could see a fourth dimension. Mm. And I remember driving over a bridge and looking at a tree, like I just could not stop looking at this tree because it was like the whole world was in high def. Mm. Wow. And it was powerful. And I even, I remember looking at stop signs and appreciating the, the men who made the stop sign. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it was like the, the deepest I had ever felt this physical world mm-hmm. in all my life. And, and that is when I found my real drug, which was getting high on spirit, getting high on life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Nobody knows about all my druggy friends are going to love this, you know, <laughs> nobody knows about this. So, but for me, I feel like that's, you know, all addicts are chasing that high, yeah. right? Yeah, right. They're really chasing the high of alignment essentially. Mm-hmm. And so push come to shove, you know, I, I started this life of spirituality shortly after that, my daughter's father committed suicide. <gasps> And yeah. And so that was, and he's a spiritual partner of mine. I love him dearly. He mm-hmm. sacrificed his life so that I could do my life's purpose. So I could live my life's purpose. Wow. And he's with me. He's, he's here. He's always with me and I love him dearly. And so there's no tears anymore about that subject, but he, that, that alone was what I needed to catapult me into a life of service, which mm-hmm. is what I always wanted. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to help the masses. I always wanted to be a singer. I always wanted to be living my dream. And I was dabbling as, of course, I had my spiritual awakening, but this catapulted me. So I started doing charity events and I started just anything I could to get my message out there. You know, I started a, a YouTube channel, I, anything I could to just get my message of love out there. And how I found happiness uh, was really important to me. And then one day, one of my spiritual friends, tells me I'm an empath. I had no clue what that was. So I went home and Googled it. I was like, I don't know what that is, but okay. And I think everybody wants to kind of hear that they're special. Mm. So I think that was my thing. I was like, oh, maybe I am like, I'm a cool psychic empath. I don't know. So I went home and I Googled it. And it, I mean, for me, it was like the key to everything that I'd been missing, you know, why I was suffering with depression for no reason. You know, why did it just pop up? I didn't get it. And I was told over time and time again, that it was my fault and that this was something that I just needed to learn that there was something wrong with my brain. And that's Mm -hmm. why I was suffering with depression. But once I found out I was an empath, it was like, no, you're just an empath. And you were raised in absolute chaos. And when you're (laughs) surrounded by that much low vibe energy, you're going to suffer, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and it was such a simple answer for me. And So immediately, you know, being that I'm such a driven go-getter person and who has suffered deeply with depression. And I honestly, I would have balked like a chicken at, you know, the stroke of midnight every day if somebody told me that was what was going to make me happy. (laughs) And so I was desperate for answers. And so I searched high and low. I looked into EFT. I looked at, which is tapping. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your audience knows about that. I looked into the energy healing modalities. I searched for everything that said, how do I separate my energy? And not just online. I mean, I looked around here and of course it came to me. And so I started to, I took, I entered into an energy healing school. Um, I trained in EFT. I started to discover energy. I became a spiritual coach through Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, And I really just started to understand and study the subtleties. Of course, meditation is a practice that I do two, sometimes even three times a day. Uh, Having a relationship with me and my inner being. Now I'm a deep follower of Abraham Hicks, but I really learned about energy and I discovered how to still be the compassionate being that I was, but not be empathetic to the point where I was feeling the deep despair of other people because When you're feeling the deep despair of other people as an empath, you really can't help them. Right. And that's what we desire so deeply is to help people. And so through, I mean, I've lived a very intense life. I've learned a lot of really tough, tough lessons. And because of that, I've, I think, you know, I started off as that impaired empath, Mm -hmm. but because of that, I learned, you know, with, because I was so sensitive and had such desperation I learned everything I needed to, I didn't, there was no dabbling for me. There was no (laughs) mediocrity. And I mean, I had to full throttle. And so I really became an expert on the subject and I didn't even mean to. 
And I did a video a couple of years back once I found out I was an empath called 10 Signs You're an Empath. And that video now has 120,000 views. Wow. And, you know, and I've gotten thousands of empaths at the same, with the same exact stories, essentially, mm-hmm. you know, how do I manage this? And, and it really is, it goes a lot deeper than just a simple answer, like ground yourself. Of course, those are really important things, grounding yourself, self-care and all of that. But the things that I learned really, I needed to develop this course because I essentially it was like, well, I just need to coach you. Mm. you know, that's, I need to teach you all of these things because there's a certain way to teach it. And it's, it's extensive. It's not a one word answer, you know, and it's really about developing a new practice in your life, a practice of energy hygiene and all of that. So, uh, so that's kind of how I got here. I sort of fell into the empath thing. And right. now I have this beautiful um, group called hashtag rock and empath. Of course, the rock and part came because I was, a, I was a singer. I, as soon as I had my spiritual awakening, I started, you know, playing out and, and following my dreams. And, um, and yeah, so there's about 2000 people in that group and I just, they just keep coming to me. So I'm like, I don't know. I just desperately wanted the answers and, and I just attracted people that desperately want the, want the answers as well. Oh, I love it. There's yeah. so many parallels Darian, I, I grew up in just complete trauma <laughs> as well, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I it was interesting when you were describing the bathroom floor incident, I thought yeah. I thought that is just like Eckhart Tolle's you know, he he mm-hmm. describes how he basically hit rock bottom and and I remember his his story goes, "Wait, he said I can't stand myself." And, and he who said, is the eye that I can't yeah. stand? Wait, am I one person or am I two? And then, yeah. <laughs> so I heard yeah. Eckhart, and, and also Eckhart was a big awakening for me as well, his work. I had yeah. a person on my show um, probably about a month ago. His name is Sam Fox. And he, I swear the story you just told, if you listen to that show, it it's exactly like Sam. Sam was like, really? Yeah. He was like, I read the first two pages or something like that of, of, um, the power of now. And then I went downstairs of my house and I started touching everything <laughs> and everything. It was crazy. You should watch the show just for that. So you can hear I will, I will. <laughs> Eckhart is some kind of magician. He does that to people. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Um, wow. I mean, just, um, what a, what a hero's story and a hero's journey. And thank you yeah. so much for all the work that you're doing. And I, I also, also, I have to tell you that I, in my experience personally, but also with the people with whom I work who are empaths, mm-hmm. that all or nothing thing is pretty common. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to just kind of learn it. I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm going to become an expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing is that this is where we tend. So th- there's that thing out in the internet that says, the empath being an empath is a curse. Mm. And because we're so sensitive, because we feel everything, that's our blessing, right? It's like the fact that, okay, you can either wait 10 years to figure out that you're on the wrong path, or you could wait 10 minutes. Mm. And when you're an empath, it's like in 10 minutes, you're going to figure out you're on the wrong path (laughs) and you're going to feel that sensitivity. You're going to feel that your, your, your thoughts aren't in alignment. You're going to feel that you stepped into the wrong room. You're going to feel that you're expending your energy with the wrong person. You're going to feel it so quickly. And that is because you are so connected to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's alignment. It's alignment that, that the, that empath curse is trying to curse Mm -hmm. is trying to bring you back to alignment. Right. So look at that as a blessing. It's always like, you ask. You. You're asking your own. You're asking yourself the question. You keep. You know, things get louder and louder in our life until we give it our full attention. And so, the, and by the way, I like to look at it because you talked. You talk about how that when we come to this understanding as an impaired empath, and we discover that we're an empath, and we're coming from that. Uh, orientation of being impaired, that sometimes people start to develop an identity around it and they get really attached to the label of it. And that all tends to smack of victimhood and the curse that you're talking about. Yeah. And I completely agree. And it's it's interesting that I, I think I, the way that I kind of look at it too, in order to sometimes release those labels, is that it's really a function. The empath 
thing is a function. And then some mm-hmm. people are more leaning toward the HSP, highly sensitive person definition, and maybe mm-hmm. they have moments of the empath function. And then there are people who are like way on the, you know, 99 percentile like you and me, <laughs> <We're> like <Yeah. laughs> run that empath function, uh, you know, 24 seven. And yeah. but there's a way to run that empath function in a way that is empowered. Like you said, that if we we can't we have to put on our own masks before we assist someone else. And it's all about if we when you understand energy, you understand that the strongest vibration always wins. So if your em- empathy is so powerful that you vibrate to the pain and the suffering, well, there you are then. Now it's yours. It doesn't even matter what the source was. You've It's yours now. And now you're no longer a person who can hold the, the vibration of empowerment and healing. Yeah. And I love the way you put that too, because it's so eye-opening to see. So, so as an empath, we all have this deep desire to save the world, Mm -hmm. right? So for one, I think to, to become an empowered empath is to realize that you aren't necessarily the savior of the world (laughs) in the, in the lower vibrational sense, right? Like you coming from the higher vibe, seeing the world is already saved. That is the savior of the world. You calling on something higher than yourself. You're not the savior and you're not going to be able to save the world. You're not going to be able to save. And that's really going to cause you a lot, a lot of, of struggle. Amen. More than struggle. But, but I love that you said when you vibrate at the pain, the frequency of the pain, that's all you're doing. Yeah. You're just vibrating more pain. And then we all know we're sort of, we're these central hubs for the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. We're just, attracting more of that. Right. So you have to vibrate as an empath. I love, and I, and it's, oh, I just love this <laughs> to be an empowered empath. And what I would call a rock and empath really is to vibrate above the pain. Yes. A- awareness of it. it. Awareness of it isn't vibrating to it. I mean, we're, we're intelligent beings. We know all of the things that happen and we've experienced yeah. them, whether in this life or in the Akashic past. And so, yeah, the, the, the point is, that is the misnomer is that as an empath who is unaware or impaired, the reason we set it up that way, and this is the other thing I teach people, is that you aren't a victim. You actually, you feel like you're absorbing, but you've actually sent out millions of these little tentacles, all these little cords, and you're saying, I want some of that, and I want some of that, and I want some of that. You're actually in charge of what you're doing. You Mm. agree? Yes. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. So that's the difference between the impaired empath and the rocket empath, what I would call a rocket empath is you understand that you are in control. Yes. When you walk into a room or, or to a person and the energy is low, you can be, you, you, you can't even help, but be aware of it because you are so in, in tune to it. But when you think from the thought of I'm a victim, mm-hmm. you immediately become the victim. Yes right? There's, there's never, ever a time. Yes. You'll get everybody feeling sorry for you, but that's not going to help you. There's never a time where feeling like a victim. I'm not saying that people aren't actual victims of of terrible acts. Of Mm -hmm. course. I'm not saying that that this isn't a time to be compassionate, but when you see yourself as a victim, you are a victim and you will continue. Yeah. I mean, you'll continue to attract that. But when you when you see yourself as what I like to call the ruler of your kingdom, I get that from A Course in Miracles, I alone am the ruler of my kingdom. Mm. When you see yourself as the ruler of your kingdom, your kingdom being your vibrations and the physical world, because that's what's creating the physical world around you. When you know that, you can see the energy, you can feel the energy, and then change it. Yes. You are what you vibrate. I actually had a show called that. (laughs) You are what you buy. You are what you eat. No, no, you are what you vibrate. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I've gotten to the point now as as an empath and really because now I'm such an avid follower of of Abraham Hicks and that's all they talk about is vibrations Mm -hmm. constantly. I mean, when you've been following Abe for a long time, you'll get that. Yes. You know, at first you might not get that at first. It looks like they're telling you all sorts of different things that conflict each other, but ultimately they're just talking about vibrations. And so now I don't even look at the physical world as a physical world. I see everything as vibrational because it Absolutely. is right. And that the physical yeah. world is just more dense vibration. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so I've really, I mean, it's, you know, it could seem like I'm in my head a bit because I feel like anybody that that is in this world, it's, we're kind of, sometimes we can be in la la land, but 
I'm just, I'm in the vibrations. I'm grounded, right? I'm not in la la land. I'm not, the vibrations aren't running me. I'm running them. Yes. And so that really is what a rocket empath is. And I wanted to talk about um, the reason I really wanted to start voicing this out in public is because, and it seems like you're totally in alignment with this as well, is when you go, at least this was what, two and a half, three years ago, when I first put that 10 signs you're an empath video up, when you went online on YouTube, which is my world, the majority of what an empath could find was victim mentality. Yep. It was laced in victim mentality. And so there were literally people, and you know, I send them love and this was probably a long time ago, but the stuff stays up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There was literally people saying, if you're living, you know, if you do it, if you're working a job and you don't like your boss, they're really negative. You should quit your job. <laughs> right. And I'm like, that, okay, but what do you do when like, you know, your mother is, is that, or the father of your child is, or your children, right. Some of us have children your children that aren't positive all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, what do, what do you do when that happens? And I'm, I'm not one to tell anybody to go live under a rock. Yes. Start to divide, to design our lives so that we're, you know, surrounded by positive people, but you can't avoid negative people. And you if you're looking at negative people and you're becoming negative, that's your problem. Mm. That's not their problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you really want to a point where you are completely intolerable because we're sensitive. We don't want to be tolerable because we want to be continually expanding into what we desire, right? Mm -hmm. Into what serves us, into the love, the beauty. But we want to be able to be in negativity and still have our high vibes, right? Like, yeah. you know, if my two-year-old throws a temper tantrum, am I going to throw a temper tantrum? No. But like, if, if her dad throws a temper tantrum, that might affect me more. Now it's like, why is that? Right. Hmm. That's what I, that's my job as the empath to explore that. It's not just an empath, but somebody that wants to be a ruler of my life. So I just could not stand people only having access to more victimhood online. Yeah. And, and listen, there are, you know, in there's ego in all realms of the world, right? So no matter where you go, you'll find some, the, something that the ego can attach itself to. And so there are some empaths that find out their empaths that still are, that aren't ready to step out of victim mentality yet. Right. They haven't hit that wall sure. and that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We love them anyway. That's completely fine. Sometimes, you know, there's a point where it served me. I thought it served me for a long time staying a victim, but I was, I was a victim for 11 years waiting for somebody to save me and look where it landed me on the bathroom floor 11 years later, doing the same thing, wanting to die, you know? Yeah. And so I couldn't let people, I just, and so I, I did to, it, it, at that point, I think I had like 200 subscribers and I was like, I don't care. I just need people this information and know that they're not a victim. Right. So yeah. I was, not only was I um, learning about all of this spirituality stuff, I was also a student of the law of attraction. So mm -hmm. I understood that as well. Right. And I just, you know, that's the reason I started doing it. That's the reason I started, you know, coming out with it. I could not let people continue to be a victim. And that was the first step to being a rock and empath is being willing to step out of victimhood. Yes. Just being willing. That is that intention, that decision that yeah. you spoke of at the beginning. I, I actually learned, learning that I was an empath was the portal to me opening up to all of my brand new life <laughs> my entire all of the intuitive yeah the the conscious working in in energy and intuition I had been studying the law of attraction like through Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle but I still didn't the fullness of how I function now the portal of it was learning that I was an empath and that was only that would be th my three-year anniversary for having that moment that awakening moment is actually just this month this December 27th. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I thank you. So I know exactly yeah. the time period you're talking about. That was what I did after I learned this. 
And like in this 15 minute phone call with a psychic, I'd never had a psychic reading before, learned Mm -hmm. this. And I didn't even, as she was saying the words, I still didn't even know what she was talking about. And I was in catharsis already. (laughs) It was like my crown just like started raining down, you know. And I went home and started Googling and I was like, I don't believe in that. I believe I'm more sovereign than that. I mean, just where I, and so I found one person at that time, the only person who I attracted was very empowered and was teaching HSP and empath empowerment. By the way, I have to give her a shout out. Her name is Caroline Venkamanad and her website is The Happy Sensitive. Her little tagline is to go from a suffering sponge to a sensitive savant. How do you, how much do you Ooh, love that? I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I totally know what you mean. And, you know, what, um, what does an empowered empath, you've talked a little bit about that. What does an empowered empath look like? to you just a couple of points how a person who might be in that impaired state still what can they aim for so so yeah let's let's actually just point on you know touch on this really quick because Mm -hmm. when i did that 10 signs you're an empath i didn't know that there was a difference between an impaired empath and an empowered empath. i just wanted people to know what an empath was because i was it was so revolutionary for me Mm -hmm. And now, or at least in the last three years, it's, I've discovered that a lot of those traits or a lot of many of the traits that you will see online about what an empath is, a lot of them are the traits of an impaired empath. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not having any boundaries with as energetic boundaries, meaning as soon as, you know, so if somebody's able to dump their stuff on you, on you, you don't have energetic boundaries. Right. Uh, and if you don't know the tools in order to set those boundaries, then you would be considered an impaired empath. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Now, an empowered empath would be somebody that has those tools mm-hmm. and uses those tools. Right. It's, it's really just the difference between impaired and empowered is somebody is you have the tools and you use them. And they're running, and, they're running constantly is where we get to. And we have new feeling habits. You, this is something you might like this that I tell my students and clients it, who you know, are sensitive and empathic that just mm-hmm. because you can feel it doesn't mean you should, you know, that's another thing is having um, awareness is one thing. Feeling it is another that I love that you say that there there is a misconception that because you're an empath, you have to feel Mm. as if other people feel. Mm -hmm. Now that really is the trait of an impaired empath. I can help. I mean, okay, here's the thing. I couldn't be a one-on-one spiritual coach if I could feel everything that my client was feeling like I used to. And when I first started doing this, I would be like, if I did an EFT session, I would be laid out for three (laughs) or four days Seriously, I would be like depressed in bed, crying my eyes out because I was not being really emotionally responsible or energetically responsible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, anybody that is an empath and tuned into energy and wants to help people, I would deeply urge you to learn about energy before you start working in other people's energies. Mm. I think people, once they learn that they're an empath, they're like, Oh, I'm going to start clearing other people's energies. And it's like, (laughs) no, don't dig into any, like, dude, that's going to bite you in the, you know what? You can (laughs) say us. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I already said it once today. Okay. (laughs) You watch my channel, you know, I I drop F-bombs left and right. So I I do. I do occasionally too. (laughs) So it's really, yeah. So it's going to bite you in the ass if you start trying to heal other people's energies and you don't know any, anything about energy mm-hmm. and how to you know, manage that stuff. But they're really, so, you know, not being able to go out in public, you know, I was like passing out if I went to a concert or anything that was in the public, I would be laid up on a tree somewhere, you know, <laughs> trying to drink water and because I, I couldn't even get up, Yeah, you know, and that's an impaired empath. Mm-hmm. Um, attracting if you continue now even even if you are a beautiful light worker you're always going to attract people that are low vibe Mm -hmm. that need the help right Mm -hmm. some of them are better intended some of them intend on you know taking control taking the reins for themselves and some don't Mm -hmm. um you know so you're always but if if you get stuck in a relationship with somebody that's abusive um you're probably an impaired empath Mm -hmm. but also Another thing that I want to mention that, that I don't talk about really ever, other than to say this, I don't focus on the narcissist and the sociopath. And I'll tell you why. I think it's beneficial to have an awareness 
of what that is. Mm -hmm. But when you focus, because it's, it's almost near impossible to focus on the traits of a narcissist and a sociopath without negativity. Mm -hmm. And when you focus on something that feels bad, it, you're just, you're emanating negativity. Right. And so being very aware of it is of course very important, but to just start diagnosing everybody, you know, (laughs) as a narcissist, is it really going to serve you? And it's really, there's a lot of false information about out there about what narcissistic personality disorder is. Yeah. These are personality disorders. They do need to be diagnosed by somebody that is licensed to make a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's something that you really think is important, and also it's like you trying to control stuff that's outside of you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You yeah. should really be looking at, well, why am I attracting this? And, and also when you think on a higher level of self, right, when you're in alignment, you're not going to see those traits. You're going to see the bliss in everybody. You're going to see, do you know what I mean? And that's what you're going to attract from them. So when you're in, so when you are connected to source, nobody can drain you. Right. When you are connected to source, nobody can cross your boundaries. Nobody can double cross you. Nobody can abuse you. When you are connected to source, you are ultimately protected. You are in, you have a perception of deep truth, which is in alignment with love, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, I think that it serves you to look online at reputable um, websites, right? Don't just find any blog and see what a narcissist and a sociopath is. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. very important to recognize um, what that relationship is to have a sense of awareness because I mean, many, many impaired empaths are in relationships like this, mm-hmm. you know, and you can find anybody and it's beautiful to have that sense of awareness, but to dive deep into it and try to be like, Oh, you're a narcissist and you're a narcissist and then start calling people names and that's not going to serve you, but to use it to empower you is beautiful. So I, anything that I teach, I really don't teach about that. I do teach how to energy heal a relationship. Mm. And I teach how to, I teach how to do energy healings on it. So in my course, how to rock it as an empath, I teach how to do energy healings on relationships, on um, your home, but mostly it's about you and you Mm -hmm. because your relationship is a reflection on your belief. Yes, that's you know awesome. I mean? You know what you make me think of as you're talking about diagnosing everyone as an empath, I mean, excuse me, as a narcissist, mm-hmm. is that an empath, this is something I think that we don't understand when we're still in that impaired kind of perspective is that you're still capable of projecting. You aren't always just absorbing. You could have your own negativity and you're projecting it onto other people. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You aren't holy just because yeah. you have this function. <laughs> and that is, that's something that I think that people need to understand. And, and not even if you become empowered, you know, you, you need to, the, the way that you know the difference is to connect to source, as you're saying. Uh, but that's, I think that's really important. And actually the, the shadow side, the seedy side of the empathic fun- function, because you very vulnerably in a video that you re- you posted on 11.11, you talked about how you actually, when you were still in your impaired state, you were manipulative. You would use your empathic abilities to manipulate. And I used my empathic abilities. I I, I did some, I was, I was a liar I w- when I was really impaired and before I was very aw- awake and I was still in my deep trauma reparation period mm-hmm. i i could lie and i could because i could just be a lie because i know how mm-hmm. to source that energy of that pretend mm-hmm. truth <laughs> and i was a really good actress too and yeah. so i can jarvis is laughing <laughs> so i could just live and be and i and it was really amazing to me because i would always when i would lie and i was the reason i was lying the way basically it was because of my narcissistic relationship that was running me and he he insisted that i did my choice to be insisted upon, but mm-hmm. I could lie and I would be standing inside going, how, how are they not? They just are choosing to believe my lie because they can feel that I'm lying. Cause I can feel when they're lying and I just choose to, you know what I mean? Cause I, I just thought everyone else could feel everything else that everyone was feeling. And I was like, yeah. so they, so I did this manipulation in my mind. They're agreeing to believe my lie. <laughs> how weird is yeah. that? It's crazy, right? 
<laughs> yeah. So, well, that's another thing is like, I, like before I, before I knew I was an empath, I just thought everybody could feel everything and yeah. had the same knowing that I did. And, and everybody has a knowing, but not everybody's connected to it for one. Yeah. And not everybody has it in the way that the empath has it. So I love that you bring this up. And before I even say it, I can definitely sense a lot of empaths that could be listening in or watching this that could feel shame for this. Right. Let's, right? let's, let's lift so, it back up. You're right. No, let, let, no, no, don't no, feel I want to, yeah, I want to talk about yeah. it, but, but this is such a beautiful, like, let's do some shadow work right now for Dude, the empath. Let's. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want everybody to recognize that this is not a time to call out your faults, right? Mm. This is a time to see the parts of you that need love. Mm. That's what the shadow is. It's just the part that needs a little bit more nurturing. And your job is to nurture it because there is those two selves that Eckhart yes. Tolle said, right? There is the higher self and the, I guess, lower self, whatever you want to call that. So it's time to just nurture this part of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to, anybody that's listening and that does, I'm going to talk about my shadow side as an empath. And I just love this. I feel like this is like deep work. I feel like we're doing right yeah. now. It's really beautiful. And I could Agreed. cry because I'm an empath, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, this is really a time to just shine the light on that and let it be free. So let us be free. Let us understand that this was survival mechanism. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so yes, I was in a lot of, I was in a lot of abusive relationships. I dated a lot of drug addicts or drug dealers, excuse me, mm. did, and drug addicts. I dated a lot of um, drug dealers, men of uh, in great power in the ghetto. Mm. You know what I mean? That So, so if you could imagine if you, I mean, you've seen all the movies, it's all true, you know, where they're, they're abusive towards their women. Um, you know, not, not everybody's like that, but that was sort of the, the environment I was in. And so um, and I also came from, you know, a lot of the women in my life had a lot of sexual abuse. I've mm. had sexual abuse as well. And right. a lot of the women in my life, <clears throat> you know, women just had, and, and just the feminine energy in all of us, we've had, because we've had so much oppression, we've had to learn how to manipulate because we're really good at manipulating with the mind. Mm -hmm. Whereas the men manipulate physically, right. Mm -hmm. Or the masculine energy. Right. Physically. So that's really just being an impaired oppressed female or the female energy really is just being able to manipulate. So what I would do was I would become what the man wanted me to be mm -hmm. because a, that made me feel loved and that put me in a place of power. And I was able to do that because I'm an empath. So mm -hmm. I was, I knew what they wanted. I knew everything they wanted. I knew how they wanted to feel. I knew how to make them feel like a million bucks. And it's still, I have to catch myself with sometimes fluffing people up a little bit too much. Mm. And I have to catch myself, you know, because you're speaking right to Jarvis. You're speaking right to yeah. Jarvis. I have to tell you he's over here because <laughs> he's an empath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have to catch myself and I, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm not being authentic. I'm being too nice right now. And this isn't me. Not that I'm not a nice person, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I'm just fluffing people up. I'm trying yeah. to make people feel good about themselves because I'm really good at that. That's just what I, I learned that behavior. And then I would, I would get um, some sort of betrayal from them, whether they cheated on me or if it was an emotional betrayal or if they put their hands on me. And then I would stay with them. I would stay in the relationship and I would learn everything I could about them and find their deepest pain point. Mm. And I would, I would hit it. Mm. And you, but you know what, this is very, this is deep shadow work because I have to say what I see as a parallel here of you reading the, the person and reading the relationship and then being it, you know, being what it was being called from you is actually a shadow side of doing that from the, the greater universe, from reading the field from a higher perspective, from reading source energy and reading the field from that higher perspective and then flowing with it that way. It is just an underbelly. It is a shadow side. So your being was giving you a demonstration. Hey, do this. And you're like, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go rogue, <laughs> which yeah. is what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I say when, when a person like you're describing earlier, how when an empath wants to heal everybody, wants to heal the world. I'm like, yeah, but you've gone rogue now because you aren't the, actually the healer. You are a channel for healing. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly true. It was like, I saw the red flags and I chose to do it my way. I chose to do it like, oh, I got this empath tricks and, you know, and I would just, I was extremely manipulative mm. in, in, and really in, if I look at every relationship friendships, um, work relationships, I was, I became what they wanted me to be. And, and I really learned. And then I was like, I was, I cheated on 
pretty much every guy I've ever been with because that was how I got them, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really, it was a, it was a cycle of me using my empath abilities to um, really shame men. I was very, I I was a real man eater, to be Mm -hmm. honest. And that was, um, I think that that's in our culture that can tend to be glamorized and romanticized. And it's sort of like, you know, um, it's like cool to be a man eater and it's not, it's, you know what I mean? It's not loving. It's not our truth. And you know what? I'm going to love myself for that. Cause there is a little shame there. There is good. And I think that, I mean, I mean, um, good. You're loving yourself. Not good. You're shamed. (laughs) No, no, I know. I know. Um, but yeah. And I think that, and I, I think that that also causes, you know, it continues to cause any triggers from sexual as that, but as a sacrifice of my true self, I discovered that you can't cheat on other people. You're cheating yourself. You know, we, we just have a few minutes left and I can't, I can't believe it. We didn't have time to take any calls because spirit just <laughs> needed a lot of information to come out. This has been dynamic and powerful. We don't have time to take a call, Dewey Jarvis. I'm so sorry for those who called in and you were hanging on the line, but please do call back again next week. But since we only have a couple of minutes left, I do want to make sure that everyone hears again how they can get in touch with you and your work and all of the amazing stuff that you offer. Yes. So yeah, I mean, this conversation has been expanded further than any conversation I've had. um, Please please come. Will you come on again? I'm just going to call you on it right now. Please. We have so much more to talk about. We need to do like, you know, 10 shows or something. (laughs) I know. This went by like it was 10 minutes. I know. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. So the course, this is actually, so I actually already closed the card on the course. This is what you're showing, but I'm going to leave it open today. (gasps) Wonderful. Yes. So if you go to Rockin Empath and it's without the G, it's just um, R-O-C-K-I-N Empath, RockinEmpath.com. You can learn all about the course um, and you can sign up for the course right there. Um, and But that's going to be at midnight Eastern time. That's going to completely close. The course starts in 2018, January 8th. Um, it's extremely powerful. I mean, if you want to learn if you want to go really deep into everything that we were discussing here, I mean, we really kind of went into the course a little bit here, yeah. <laughs> but, but a lot of tools, really a lot of tools is what I'm teaching. It's getting a daily practice of being an empowered empath Amazing. and following your dreams and whatever is stopping you is you being a really sensitive person is probably stopping you. So everything else, if you want to find me online is Darian empire. So I don't know if you have my name spelled up there. I have. Yeah. So yeah, Jarvis has it. I'm an interesting spelling to my name. So it's just Darian Empire um, all across the board, all throughout social media, DarianEmpire.com. Um, I do Facebook lives every single day where I read the lessons from A Course in Miracles. We are on lesson 339 today. Ooh, so amazing. Been doing it for a while. Um, I also have a membership program called Keys to the Empire. We just did our full moon ritual today. Uh, we do all sorts of juicy things. I have a Mission Love podcast that my membership uh, gets. And every single Friday, um, which I haven't been doing because I've been doing this course, but I'm going to start again this Friday. Every single Friday, I have been for the last three years doing a YouTube video called Freedom Friday, where I give spiritual advice. And I talk all about the things that we've been talking about. I talk not just about empaths. I don't just teach empaths. I have a, a whole realm of <laughs> people that follow me. But Um, I also talk about depression. I talk about the law of attraction. I talk about spirituality. I talk a lot about a lot of things. So wonderful. Thank you so much, Darian. This has been amazing. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I hope you do come back again. And to everyone who is listening still, I just want to remind you that you can see the archives of the videos at youtube.com slash Trisha Carr. You can watch us and hear us live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific on any of my social media outlets or at ubnradio.com channel one. And you can also find us on iHeartRadio, iTunes by searching Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. Please, please, I want to ask you especially if you love this show if you like this show subscribe comment share like do all of those things I ask you please and by the way I have an empath course too a six-week course and we have a community called empowered empath and highly sensitive intuitive and you can find that at my website trishacarcharm.com where you'll also be able to find meet and work with your elemental guides once again thank you to my special guest Darianne and thank you for tuning in I love you whoever you are thank you